This is a patient who is status post femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery. She developed a severe Z syndrome and was uh, treated with YAG laser multiple times. Uh, it did not resolve and she has five diopters of uh, astigmatism. She is uh, referred in from out of town for um, lens exchange. Um, in this case, uh, there is a very small thematic capsulorexis. So uh, I'm going to um, uh, dissect the lens out of the capsular bag. Uh, and uh, of course, because the posterior capsule is uh, mostly absent because of the extensive YAG laser treatment, um, a uh, pars plane of vitrectomy will need to be done prior to attempting to remove the lens. Here I filled the anterior chamber with dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea and placed pars plane of trocars. Um, I'm now making my clear cornea incision. Uh, 23 gauge pars plane of vitrectomy will be carried out here. Um, and um, once this is done, I can safely manipulate the lens. Um, here I'm using viscoelastic to try to uh, dissect the anterior and posterior capsule fibrosis uh, a bit and free up the lens, but you can see that the lens is uh, really uh, pretty socked in. Um, we're going to take some more uh, viscoelastic from the other side and try to uh, free up the lens a little bit, dissecting uh, gently some of the fibrosis here uh, between the anterior and posterior capsule. Um, now, um, I'm going to place um, iris retractors to uh, hold the anterior capsule rim. Uh, this will serve two purposes. It'll expand the anterior capsule opening to help me prolapse the lens up through the anterior capsule. And it'll stabilize the uh, complex so that I'm not transmitting as much of my uh, manipulation forces onto the remaining zonules. Um, after the anterior the anterior capsule is stabilized and expanded with the iris retractors. A cyclodialysis spatula is placed through the pars plana, and um, I can now grasp the uh, optic of the lens with the forceps and cut the um, hinges with a uh, micro scissor without having to worry about damaging the anterior capsule rim. Once the optic is freed up, it is cut most of the way through so I can uh, manipulate it uh, out through a relatively small uh, incision in the clear cornea. At this point, the optic is removed. I'm going to trim the plates. Uh, I've grabbed the uh, remaining plate here, and I'm putting a little uh, tension on it and cutting with the uh, Packer Chang micro scissor and pulling out this uh, remnant. Uh, now the uh, other plate will be uh, flipped up, uh, and I'll use a Sinsky hook to hold it while I switch instruments and grab it with a uh, micro forcep. Uh, now while I'm holding the uh, plate, I'll rotate the microscope a bit with my left hand so I have a better angle uh, using uh, a scissor in my left hand. And now I can get a good angle on this uh, haptic, uh, this plate, and cut this uh, short so that I don't have to worry about it migrating into the visual axis. Uh, you have to be careful not to drop these remnants in a vitrectomized eye because they can end up uh, falling to the back of the eye. Um, at this point, uh, I'm going to try to create a pocket to optic capture the lens. Uh, I'm dissecting away some of the fibrosis between the anterior post and capsule, and you can see that a radial tear has developed at about 12.30 to 1 o'clock, uh, despite the fact that the uh, fibrosis at the edge of the capsule rim is intact. Um, so it appears that the underlying capsule was uh, deficient and tore out. And here, uh, as I'm uh, dissecting some of the uh, posterior capsule fibrosis, you can see that the uh, radial tear uh, extends to include the fibrotic edge of the phimosis. And now there's a uh, complete uh, radial tear and uh, it precludes the option of optic capture, which is what I was hoping to do in this case. Uh, so now I've made a decision that I'm going to try to dissect out completely this uh, plate remnant uh, at 6 o'clock because I don't want it to migrate into the visual axis over time. So I'm carefully dissecting out the remaining uh, plate here uh, and the whiskers. Um, 
and now I've made a decision that I'm going to place a uh, lens in the sulcus and suture one haptic to sclera so I don't have to worry about it rotating uh, and developing a sunset syndrome uh, as the zonules in this case were weak at 6 o'clock. So here I'm going to place a 9-oproline suture uh, through a scleral flap under the iris out through the clear cornea incision. Um, I'm going to uh, inject uh, the lens here. This is a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic lens, uh, an Aaron Scientific EC3PAL uh, lens. Um, I'm leaving one haptic out and uh, tying the 9-oproline suture to this haptic um, to secure it so I don't have to worry about the lens uh, shifting its position in the sulcus. Um, here I'm tying the 9-oproline to the remaining haptic. I'm now going to dial the lens into uh, position and um, suture the 9-oproline to the base of the scleral flap. Uh, where it will uh, be covered uh, by sclera and conjunctiva. Um, I pass the suture through the base of the flap and I'm tying it to itself here and adjusting the tension so that the lens uh, is nice and centered. Um, once this is cut short, I'm going to test the uh, position and uh, stability of the lens, which is excellent here. Uh, the conjunctiva is closed. Uh, the trocars are removed. Uh, and uh, this patient uh, did quite well uh, with 20-20 uh, vision the next day with a low myopic correction of minus 0.75 diopters.